So I'm John Sandman. Um, I've heard all the jokes before, you know, the Cordettes, Metallica, America. So Sandman thing, that joke's already done. But you can sing to me if you want. Um, I'm the product manager for plugin products at SSL. This is my first ADC ever. Um, I don't think SSL have ever really piped up before with a talk. Um, so I'm quite excited to be here, as you can probably tell from my face and general demeanor. Um, <clears throat> so a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, an introduction to SSL and the Audiotonics group. Um, a history of SSL, a brief whistle-stop talk, because there's quite a lot of it. Um, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you how to stand the test of time, kind of. Um, testing is a topic very close to my heart. I started at, uh, at SSL uh, in a test engineer role um, before moving to products. So I'm going to talk about what we test, uh, some of the challenges involved, um, and how we solve them. Uh, spoiler alert, the headline is kind of automation and bespoke tools and solutions out of R&D. So if that's all you need to know, you can go now. Um, so I'll start by talking a bit about the Audiotonics group, because I don't think a lot of people know about it, um, and how SSL fits into that. So SSL used to be owned by Peter Gabriel, but in 2017, we were acquired by the Audiotonics group. Um, Audiotonics consists of eight companies at the moment. So that's Alan Heath, Carrick, Digico, Digigrid, Group One, uh, Clang, Solid State Logic, and Sound Devices. And products uh, developed across the group spans kind of live sound broadcast, uh, house of worship installations, uh, film production recording studios, uh, and audio creation products, which is my bag. Um, so I'm going to do a brief history. Brief. 1970s. SSL was founded in 1969 by Colin Sanders, who started building his own consoles out of Acorn Studios in Oxfordshire. Um, by 1976, um, we saw the very first A-series analog console and committed to improving the sound and workflow. Uh, the design was iterated on throughout the 70s and eventually became the legendary SL 4000E console, which you may have heard of. Um, the development of the SSL 4K and further variants, including the SSL 9KJ, uh, spanned two decades during which SSL, SSL dominated the studio, uh, studio recording industry. There's quite a good fact that gets thrown around, uh, which is that during this time, SSL consoles produced more platinum records than all others combined. Um, I don't know where that data is, but people keep telling me that. Um, although SSL has a genesis deeply rooted in analog consoles, uh, genesis maybe being an unconscious reference to the fact that we used to be owned by Peter Gabriel, um, Despite this, we've been working in the digital domain since the mid-'80s. Uh, in 1985, SSL created the O1, which was an eight-channel uh, digital recorder and editor. I'm quite glad we didn't continue with that uh, product naming scheme, um, although it would have scaled quite well, I suppose. Um, the O1 and other technologies were later scaled up uh, to create the A-series range of digital consoles. Uh, in 1986, we moved to our new headquarters in Begbrook uh, in Oxfordshire. One of my favorite things about SSL is that in the R&D department. Uh, you know, we have software engineers, analog designers, uh, hardware engineers, mechanical engineers, uh, testers, product team, all within about 20 second walk of each other, I suppose. It's a good environment to be inspired, and there's a lot of expertise there. Um, this is a photo of all of us that doesn't include me, so I'm going to move on. Um, the 1990s. So the 90s really saw the dawn of uh, digital audio. As we continue to improve our analog designs, um, we eliminated capacitors from the uh, SL uh, 9KJ uh, using our super analog technology. Um, we also ramped up R&D in the digital domain. So we developed a myriad of products uh, leveraging digital technologies that targeted uh, applications from music production through to uh, broadcast and post-production. Uh, the Naughties, the Naughties. Naughties saw the introduction of C-series console, console, so larger channel counts, talking like 512 channels, uh, multiple mix and stem buses up to 7.1 surround sound, uh, and later things like true dual redundancy and the things that are kind of important to broadcasters. Um, that sounded like a throwaway thing. It is important, um, not just to broadcasters, very important. Uh, then on the studio side, we introduced a new series of hybrid consoles uh, combining classic analog console summing processing uh, with hands-on uh, door control, all from a single user interface, which was the console. Um, this kind of approach has continued uh, to evolve and is really at the heart of SSL's music production products. Um, the focus is always you know, workflow and integration. Uh, door control kind of being the natural evolution of early SSL um, features such as motorized fader automation, um, which allowed the recording of automation uh, in an analog mixing session, uh, and features such as total recall, which I think is fabulously named, uh, and transport control. Uh, so the AWS duality and matrix included advanced multi-door, uh, uh, multi-layer door control, 
Uh, and each came with a Java application, uh, which let you configure the console from your computer. Uh, 2006 also saw the release uh, of the Duende outboard DSP, which later became SSL native and the SSL plugin range, uh, which is what I now manage. The tens always sounds a bit weird to me. It's not quite as um, it doesn't sound as good as the eighties or the nineties or the noughties. The tens uh, at the very dawn of the tens. Uh, we released our very first dedicated uh, door control surface. It came in the form of the Nucleus. Um, in 2016, we entered into the live console business with the L500 console. Um, we have an example of a live console at the L100 downstairs, if you come, come to our table. And this was built on the, the brand new Tempest processing platform, uh, bringing a range of innovations to the sector. Uh, on the topic of Tempest, quick aside, this is a quote from the Tempest. I just felt like it was kind of appropriate. Um, and I like to imagine that he was talking about the Tempest platform. Um, here's another quote also from the Tempest that I quite liked, um, because it proves that no truly, truly nothing um, is original. So moving swiftly on, um, the Naughty saw the introduction of Sigma, which was an automated um, analog summing mixer, the Delta control line uh, of software that brought door-to-console automation to our analog products. Um, so that's basically plug-in store uh, automation for analog mixing sessions inside of your door session, and then you play that back in the analog domain. Um, System T was launched in 2016 to meet the demand for uh, broadcast solutions that integrated with off-the-shelf IP, such as Dante, which is networked audio. Um, and whew, in 2018 came SSL native v6, which is obviously the natural progression of uh, Duende for completely in-the-door processing, just plugins as we know and love them. Um, and since being acquired by Audiotonics, we've seen new products such as the SSL Fusion 6 Origin Console uh, and our very first audio interfaces, which were the 2 and T+. Plus. Whew. OK, so uh, that's a bit of history. Um, so SSL has been innovating for quite a long time. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of key milestones that I think are important. So we've got computer-controlled analog mixing consoles. So that's the instant reset of switches, features like Total Recall, um, and that was essentially the equivalent of a kind of like guided old click to reset your door parameter, um, except we did it about 10 years before the first commercially available audio plugins. Um, SSL was an early adopter as well of network digital audio uh, and video solutions, such as Screen Sound, Vision Track, and SoundNet, which apart from having great two syllable punchy names, um, were some of our early products that served as the backbone for our digital range of consoles that we released throughout the 90s and beyond. Um, some other early DOORS innovation, pun intended, was our integration of DOORS into the analog mixing work workflow. So that was via the hybrid audio console um, that I mentioned. And obviously, that's all to do with swapping between the analog domain and multi-layer door control with the press of a button. Um, and then, of course, we have been doing DSP for quite a while. Um, Duendi was designed to be a powerful DSP platform uh, serving up SSL console-grade processing. Uh, within your workstation, um, and at the time offered a whopping 32 channels of SSL signal processing. Uh, started with the SSL channel strip and bus compressor, and over time we added further plugins, um, and this eventually became the SSL native plugin range. Um, Duende here, this is an interesting fact, Duende has a Spanish folklore meaning, meaning artistic flamenco spirit, which I think kind of shows that we not only innovate with our products, but also our product naming practices. Um, marketing have not yet allowed me to call. Uh, any of my products, Burrito. Um, if you come to the SSL table, uh, we do have an app called Taco. I'm sticking to a theme. Um, and that's used to remotely control the live console. So you run that on your tablet. Um, you know, you can, as a live sound engineer, you walk around the venue and you can control the faders and the levels uh, and the effects and sends, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so come and take a look at that. Whew, OK, so testing. Um, I worked as a test engineer, like I said, for three years uh, before I joined the product team. So it's a subject very close to my heart. And here you can see that I found the most ridiculous uh, testing-related stock image that I could find. It's very Deus Ex. Um, so what kind of things do we test at SSL? So we do validation of DSP emulations. We do beta testing and user acceptance. We do end-to-end -end plugin testing. We do audio tests on consoles and stage boxes, clocking configurations in complex live and broadcast systems, um, and things like PCB sub-assemblies. Some of these tests must run over long periods of time, um, as the system might do in the field, uh, and touched by the test engineer. Um, so we've kind of developed, inside of SSL, our own test stack, our in-house test stack, to cater for the wide-ranging needs um, 
of the business and to support R&D and all of these different products that we make, which I find quite interesting, so I'm going to tell you about it. Um, so, you know, how do you test a million things? Quite frankly, the answer is automation. I've indicated this concept here with a man that looks very happy to have met a robot. The truth is some testing is always going to be manual, and being hands-on is really important as well. There's always going to be a lot of nuance to do with interacting with your products that is simply difficult to automate or trust a robot with. Um, and also, with the ever-expanding expectations of customers to have choice or multiple variations of the same product, um, for software to play nicely in their environment, integrating with their choice of door uh, or their choice of operating system, the num number of variables involved is just going up and up and up. And, and that means a lot more tests to run, right? So I was just going to um, talk to you about some of the tooling that we use at SSL um, that we use to reduce the time to test across all of our products. Um, that kind of in includes production tests, uh, kind of continuous test automation uh, on trunk code, and also uh, kind of functional test management systems, because there's an overhead there involved as well. Um, and that's that one at the bottom. That's what I've mostly been working on uh, since I joined SSL. So the SSL test platform. Um, many of the live and broadcast systems that we develop have lots of moving parts. Um, not always literally. Our consoles do have some wheels and great handling and acceleration, should you wish to try traveling on them, but we wouldn't recommend it. Um, testing these systems is really complex, but we solve this using automation. So the SSL test platform um, is a Windows desktop application written in C Sharp uh, using the .NET framework. Um, we developed this in 2015. Um, this was written by a member of the R&D design support team. You know, as, as with all of these test dev applications, we develop them to make our jobs easier, to make our lives easier. Um, this one in particular was designed to provide a unique, reliable, and expandable test solution. I could throw words like synergy into that sentence, but really what it does is test things for us uh, so that we don't have to be there or to do things quickly that our human brains and hands can only do quite slowly. Um, for a bit of context, I'm just going to quickly um, tell you what the R&D design support team and the functional test teams do. So R&D design support uh, do validation of hardware designs, um, especially of hardware components, particularly in production tests and during development, so when we're creating PCB assemblies. And the functional test team uh, tests all of our products to check that they're meeting the technical requirements and have and behave as specified, uh, routing out the bugs before release. And they also kind of provide a feedback loop with the product team and also with the software team uh, to investigate and resolve bugs. So what do we use this for? Um, we automate a lot of our hardware validation tests. Um, you know, kind of individual cards, PCB assemblies that form a wider system. Um, the functional test team also use this in addition to the design support team. Um, and they use it as a tool to automate some of the, the bigger functional test tasks. Um, we can also use it to identify faulty units or help with repairs. Um, and we use it, uh, we deploy it in production to test sub-assemblies in their place of manufacture, um, and also in-house on fully assembled consoles and systems that we build at, the, uh, at uh, SSL HQ. And we do some things like automate D-scope, uh, for running digital audio tests. Um, we can automate NetBooter for rebooting certain parts of the system, program cards, control test jigs, um, and control audio routing switches. And this is especially useful, we find, for uh, running kind of stress tests and smoke testing and hardware validation. And, and these kind of testing systems are very hardware-based. Um, although we do also interact with the software via, um, you know, essentially servers run that we talk to, we make a connection via a port, and we can command it, tell it to do things. It's all part of uh, automating the software as well. The slammer, so the SL, oh, yeah, the slammer, let's call it the slammer. Um, the SL, the AMA stands for Audio Measurement App. This is a tool that we developed um, as an alternative to Dscope for running audio analysis tests. Um, this application is written in Juice. Uh, it serves as an audio host, um, which you can load multiple audio analysis plugins into that target a particular audio, audio interface. So, for example, you can hook it up to Dante, to do networked audio tests, or you can uh, just connect it to an audio interface. Um, and we integrate this application with the test platform um, and use it to drive CRC and tone tests uh, in products that pass audio. The SSL test harness, so there's a theme here that we just put the word SSL before all of the uh, tool names. So the test harness is a standalone application used for running automated console tests. So this is really software oriented, and this was developed by the software team. So we use this together with Jenkins um, and a console, and it forms quite a powerful automated software test system. Um, it has kind of GUI, command line, and telnet terminals that can be used to run tests. 
and you can target uh, consoles on the network. Uh, it supports running tests essentially remotely around the building or on a console, uh, maybe on a remote network. So it allows you to maybe test a console in the field, for example. And it's much more oriented to software testing than hardware. Um, and this is because we build it from the same trunk as the Tempest platform. So we can directly um, access the assigner functions in there and, and kind of interact with the software uh, a bit more like a user would um, rather than via hardware. So this is what a regression test might look like. It's fairly typical. Um, you know, you've got a setup, main body and teardown function. Um, yeah, so importantly, you can access all of the software functionality from a set of test interfaces uh, that are maintained by the software team. Um, and not only can this be leveraged by the software team for writing tests for their software, but also by the functional test team for bigger picture kind of end-to-end -end user tests um, that need to poke some advanced software functionality. Um, the other place that we use the test harness is something that we call the Tower of Test, um, a project between the functional test team and the software team. It's essentially a skeleton test jig uh, containing all the components of a production console with the ability to swap out cards. Um, our console systems are quite modular, so there's a lot of different <laughs> variations that need testing. Um, this test jig is connected to remotely. The test harness can run tests on nightly builds of the software, validate using real hardware um, so that we can run those end-to-end -end tests that span hardware, firmware, and software. Uh, you know, and what this is especially useful for um, allows us to identify bugs in the system pretty early on uh, that wouldn't be visible from running uh, software unit tests or from the level of test that sometimes is achievable uh, from a, a developer's setup at their desk um, just because the, all of the hardware that's involved. So the SSL test manager has probably been the biggest uh, development that I brought to SSL since I joined in 2016. So it is a full stack web application um, that's been developed sp specifically for tracking test results. And it's built on a stack including TypeScript, React, Node.js, MongoDB, and GraphQL. Um, and I also want to bridge the gap between some of our other tooling as well. So I integrated it with TFS and Jenkins, which are primary um, development code and build servers. Uh, so this is a bit, of, I'm going to talk about this a bit more because I've made it, so there's a bit of history. When I joined the company, a lot of tests were managed using spreadsheets. Um, this created a lot of overhead and maintenance for the test team. Um, so it began, this whole project kind of began as this life as Google Sheets add-on. Uh, the consoles already had thousands of tests that need to be performed and the plugins as well, especially the plugins. You know, there's a lot of tests uh, for plugins where they kind of apply to all of these products. Um, and having to maintain that same test across multiple products seems like an unnecessary overhead. Um, and as we were developing more and more products, especially, for example, stage boxes as well, um, the systems were just getting more and more complicated, and the tests overlapped between products. Uh, the number of combinations was growing, and just the simple act of tracking stuff was becoming more and more difficult. Um, so I identified that we needed a way to more neatly organize tests into groups, and you end up with uh, some spreadsheets looking like this. Um, so I taught myself JavaScript, build a built a Google Apps script and a set of tick sheet templates. Um, and this was really where my journey into full stack web, web development started. And the idea of kind of building tools that were geared towards supporting R&D. And, and I think before now, maybe my web development knowledge was limited to probably as a kid making websites in Dreamweaver with a lot of GIFs in, that kind of thing. Um, so this was a Google Sheets add-on that was installed by all, all members of the team. Uh, it kind of automated a way of uh, doing all kinds of actions to do with ed editing and managing them. Um, one of the more complex features would let you branch tick sheets in the same way that you would code. Um, uh, and things like a work item designer, which allowed us to more easily generate TFS tasks uh, in a standard format. Uh, we just did that by building URLs. So we were really pushing the limitations of what we could achieve here with existing tools, so Google Sheets. Um, and some of, there were some really, really, really crazy Google Sheets formulas involved. Um, I hope no one ever sees them ever again. Um, so at some point, you, you ask yourself, do you just want to build an app? Um, building something so intrinsically linked to Google Sheets as well as feels a bit brittle. Uh, it was difficult to maintain. We, we were hitting those limitations of what we could achieve. Um, so we, over the next year or so, uh, we developed the first version of the SSL Test Manager, which moved our test management system to a web app and database system. Um, the rest of the functional testing got involved, picked up TypeScript and React, started contributing as well. So the key features of this application were things like the ability to create projects, products, product families, and milestones, and iterations. Uh, that was the key thing. That's where you actually did the testing. Um, and enforcing a clear way of managing those tests 
uh, setting priorities, detailed test descriptions with rich text, uh, multiple steps, and another really important thing, indicating when a test has been automated or could be automated. Um, and kind of at, at a glance statistics for all the products, that kind of thing. Um, some of the more complicated stuff that it does uh, is test linking, so creating a single test in one place and applying it across multiple products. So checking off that test, um, you know, that can either be per product or maybe apply to multiple products if you know that testing it in one place is essentially testing it in another. Um, configurations, uh, I developed this one myself for testing plugins in particular. Um, and the way it works is you define multiple target operating systems, uh, plugin formats, doors, uh, et cetera. And it essentially allows a test case to accept results for kind of every different combination that needs checking. So obviously when you get into plugin testing, we're talking you know, multiple Mac OS operating systems, potentially multiple Windows operating systems, uh, the different formats that you can build for. And you can do these kind of, you can check these things off manually uh, in the test manager, or you can tell the test manager what your current testing environment is. Um, so say Mac OS High Sierra in Ableton testing VST3. And it automatically uh, narrows the context of the test down so you can kind of just go and check them off. So there are a couple of the key concepts. Um, you know, we also use it for kind of aggregating cloud documents and references in one place. Uh, there's some TFS and Jenkins uh, integration, so it pulls information about build jobs, uh, fetches TFS tasks and work items. Um, and the idea there is really just to show them in a friendlier format directly from the test manager without uh, the need for building queries, uh, which I find um, is a bit slow. So, and most importantly, there are some Easter eggs, which I'm going to reveal one to you. Um, the most important Easter egg is that uh, at any random point in time, the letter P, if it's on screen, may change to the font Papyrus. And if you then click on the letter P, um, it switches you into James Cameron's avatar mode. Um, for those who haven't seen the SNL, SNL sketch, Ryan Gosling plays a man that is driven insane by the fact that Avatar, the biggest blockbuster of all time, used the default font Papyrus for its logo. Um, so, you know, I spent some time to build that in as well, because that's also very important. So, what's next? Uh, so, a big thing's desktop automation. There's a really interesting talk just before this one in this room uh, from Joe. Uh, it was really interesting to see what he's been doing as well, actually. I'll have to go have a chat with him. Um, before I moved into the product team, I was testing plugins almost exclusively. Started looking into desktop automation and how we might automate plugin testing. There's quite a few challenges involved with that. Um, you know, so you've got multiple environments, you've got multiple different operating systems. Probably one of the biggest things is the fact that your software is hosted in someone else's software. So how do you automate true end-to-end -end tests uh, when you have to interact with both? And also, how do you maintain these tests when the host software may change? So a key point is you need to develop a system that's not going to be brittle, and your tests also shouldn't be brittle. So there's a couple of ideas that I came up with um, before I moved to the product team that I wrote some software for. Um, you know, so you would probably deploy uh, an automation server that would run, run on the target machine and can be driven remotely, um, offering ways to interact remotely. And you could use things like accessibility um, or computer vision, are a couple of options. Um, and they've kind of got the pros and cons. Um, virtualization uh, could be part of that test stack as well, although it can become tricky when hardware is involved. And obviously, we do a lot of stuff where end-to-end -end tests is software, firmware, hardware. Um, and then obviously, you might use something like robot framework um, to generate reports, or you could even integrate with our existing test management systems. So the test manager, um, that already has a, an API that we could use, and maybe we could start directly uh, managing tests from there. So thanks for listening. I don't really know how long that took. Um, it's probably pretty quick. Uh, I hope you've learned something. If not, then I hope you found something that I talked about interesting. Um, the takeaway that I'm trying to give is that if you want to make your life or job easier, you can probably build something to do that. I think that's what I quite like about uh, development. Um, with all the tooling available, uh, you can get up and running and develop an application pretty quickly nowadays. So uh, you can not only build products for other people, but uh, products for yourself and your peers and colleagues too. And that's what I find quite exciting. Um, and that is the end of my talk. Um, well, I, I covered quite a lot of stuff there quite quickly. Um, feel free to come and find me and talk about any of this stuff, and I can give you, I can, I can talk to, about it further because I find it very interesting. Um, and I will take questions, I guess. Yeah, we've got time yeah, for a couple of quick questions. Uh, Hi. Um, do you do any? Uh, 
automated uh, self tests on the um, analog signal chains for the for the consoles, for instance. Um, I find that mostly at the moment that a lot of that is manual, and we do a lot of kind of more user acceptance testing, measuring um, uh, the, the hardware design. Uh, the analog designers tend to to validate that part of the test. So do the design and support teams. We tend not to automate that side of uh, testing. Um, probably the biggest challenge for us at the moment is really software, uh, where the overhead for that is massive, whereas we don't find that's a problem with uh, analog designs. Uh, 